Welcome to Project One. The purpose of this video is to kind of talk to you a little bit about the project and then to show you how to generate the printouts that I'm asking you to generate for this project. I'll be creating a video like this for each of the four projects that you're going to have this semester. You know this one's due on September 4th at midnight. You've already, or maybe you haven't, you should download the project, open it up, and then fill out the answers, create the printouts, fill out the answers, and then submit it to me in Canvas. There's a video showing you how to do that in the project link in the project page in Canvas. All right, so main question, main couple main topic things that I'll cover right off the bat. First, no generic information. When you say data, I'm going to take a point off. Don't, data means prices or sizes or mileages or uh, rents or there's words that I want you to use. Be as specific as you can. So generic model one or location one. Tell me Brandon. Tell me uh, Honda Corps, whatever it happens to be, be, be as specific as you can be when you're answering the questions. Uh, ones, twos, and threes don't mean a whole lot to anybody but yourself until you explain what they mean to me. All right. Um, so let's just kind of go through. Let's talk about what I'm asking for. Experimental unit. In very first uh, week, very first module, very first, probably the very first video, part one, I talked about what an experimental unit was. It's the object we measure to get a single piece of data. So a single something or other is going to be your experimental unit and it depends which data set you're working with. There are three variables for each of the data sets. Explain to me what they are. Tell me what the variable is. Maybe it's mileage, maybe it's size, maybe it's location, and then for each of the variables tell me whether it's quantitative or qualitative. Those are the two different types. Now as part of the model or location you entered ones, twos, and threes. That's instructed in the data which is fine. Tell me what they are. Tell me what one, two, and three represents. Tell me one is Hillsborough County, two is Pinellas County, three is Pasco County, um, or whatever it happens to be for your project. And that way later on when you talk about, hey, we didn't identify any outliers in Brandon, I'll know that that's because that's level one for you. So tell me what levels one, two, and three are. Very easy, no printouts needed. This is all just based on the data set that you worked with. Now, first printout that I want you to generate deals with the shape of the prices. So I'm going to show you in a little bit in my demonstration how to generate a stem and leaf display and also generate a histogram in statistics. All your printouts should be done in statistics. So I'm going to get on the application gateway. I'll use one of the data sets and I'll, I'll create those printouts. Now based upon what the printout looks like, I want you to make an assessment. I want you to tell me whether you believe the prices and your assessment should be Based on the plots below, I believe the prices of my 75 automobiles, 75 apartments, 75 homes are either mound shaped and symmetric or skewed left or skewed right. Those are the three most likely answers to that question and you got to just apply the correct one to the plots you see below. So just give me an assessment, but write a statement. I believe that the prices of my 75 apartments are skewed to the right, are uh, symmetric and something like that. All right, question five, you're going to be generating some descriptive statistics. There's a whole bunch of math here that I don't want you to do. So I'm going to show you how to get statistics to generate for your sizes or mileages. Notice you only have one of those. If you're working with the automobiles, it's mileages. If you're working with the apartments or the homes, it's sizes. But I want you to create a printout where you give me the N, which will say 75, the mean, the median, the standard deviation, the minimum, maximum, and the quartiles for the variables specified. And then I want you to interpret in the words of the problem, the following statistics. I want you to give me the mean. And the mean, if you just tell me the mean is equal to, let's see, we're working what size is. If you tell me the mean is equal to 2,000, I'm not gonna give you any credit for that at all because I see that number in the printout. I want you to tell me, give me some words that tell me what the mean represents. The average size of my 75 apart, the average mileage of my 75 on the So give me, just write a statement. Just get in the habit. I want you to get in the habit in this first project of writing sentences, words that mean something to non-statisticians. Standard deviation. This is probably where we take off the most points on this project. I want you, your statement should say, I believe most of my sizes, most of the 75 apartment sizes, most of the 75 automobile mileages, most of the 75 home sizes fall between, and I want you to tell me two values, the, where the lower value you think it falls between and the upper value. And when we talk about standard deviations, it's, it's easy for me to say, when we talk about standard deviations and z-scores, they're going to be tied into the shape of the distribution. So if you think you have symmetric data or even slightly skewed data, 
or even kind of skewed data where you can use the empirical rule or the modified empirical rule, two standard deviations is a big value to look at. If you don't have either of those, we bump it out to three. Now, if that doesn't mean anything to you when you're watching this video, please go take a look at the interpreting the standard deviation material that I posted. And so you're going to be using either within two or three standard deviations for the standard deviation interpretation, and you're going to be looking at outliers with the values, comparing them to the values of the z-scores to the values plus or minus two or plus or minus three, depending which is appropriate for you. I want you to calculate the z-score. Now, the way we do it is we take the observation. So you're going to take the minimum. You're going to subtract off the mean, divide by the standard deviation. I've tried to create a little formula here in Word. And so I've downloaded this Word file directly from Canvas. And I want you to go in there and actually plug in some numbers. So maybe it's 2,500 is your minimum minus the mean of 5,000 divided by the standard deviation of 100. You're going to use the real numbers in your printout. Um, but that would be a negative 2.5 oops if i'm doing my math correctly is that an outlier yeah it would be why because it falls more than two standard deviations away it's outside plus or minus two and so i want you to do that for both the minimum and the maximum if you need to write these numbers by hand that's fine and uh, here's another general statement i'll make about anything you do with this software um, i don't care how you you get the information take a picture with your phone and upload a, a document um, sometimes copying and pasting, using a snipping tool or whatever this screenshot is in a, in a Mac. Um, but I want to get the printouts into this document somehow. And again, I'll, I'll give you a quick demonstration of that in a bit. But that's what I'm looking for with the Z-scores. As far as this last page is concerned, I want a box plot. The box plot's actually going to have three box plots, one for each of your locations or each of your models. And I want you to just tell me how many of each type of outlier. Now, when I talk about box plots, the terminology you've seen me use in the videos, we either have outliers, suspect outliers, or expected observations. I'm asking you to tell me how many of each suspects and outliers that you have. The right answer may be, I have no suspects and no outliers, or I may have two outliers and no suspects, or one suspect and no outliers. But make sure you tell me that you have none of the other type or none of both types so I can give you credit for it. If you just say I have no outliers, I'm gonna take a point off for not mentioning suspect outliers. So say I have no outliers and no suspect outliers if that's appropriate for you. And so you're gonna make three statements here. You don't have to do anything more with it. You don't have to tell me anything more about it. Just tell me how many of each type you have. And that, my friends, is project one. Now let me go over to the application gateway and I'll do a demonstration for you. So because this is the first project, I'm going to go through the process again with you, uh, but I'm going to go into the application gateway. Once it opens up, I'm going to hit sign in. It will load all the software, as you can see it's doing now. Uh, eventually, we're going to get down here to Statistics 10 software. I'm going to click on that. It's going to ask me what resources I always allow. And now sometimes at this point, when I'm at the university, it asks for my credentials. When I'm working at home, yeah, it did here. Now it remembers my password at home. At the university, I have to type it in, but then hit submit. And it should open up into a statistics spreadsheet. And eventually you open up a spreadsheet, which I'm going to maximize in the screen here. So now I need to work with data. Now I've created a data set or a video showing you how to work with data sets, both Excel I'm going to assume for this demonstration, I'm not going to redo that, but I'm going to assume for this demonstration that you have a data set. So I'm going to go and get it. I have an Excel data set. So I'm going to hit this little arrow here that's going to let me upload data. And now I need to go and find it. And I've created it something clever called Home Data Demo. So I'm going to go and click on that and I'm going to open it. And I'm expecting all this wonderful stuff to happen. And it said it put it in the desktop virtual drawing. All right, so now I got to go and get it. So it's an Excel data set. So I'm going to click on File. And I'm going to come down. Let's try that again. I'm going to click on File. There's a lot of lag when I do videos and I do demonstrations. So I'm going to import an Excel file. And now I got to go and find it. And so I got to kind of work through here to find where the virtual drive is. So I click on and open up this PC. When I do that, I come down to Remote Desktop Virtual Drive. And then I go to Uploads. A lot of work. 
And when I do that, that's the data set, my home demo data that I want to work with. So I'll say open. And now it's going to take a minute. But eventually it's going to ask me what I want to do with the variable names. I'm just going to say, okay, read the names from the file and it's going to open up the file. And there you go. Now, I don't want to have to go through that process all the time. So what I'm going to recommend you do, if this is the first time, is I'm going to save this data set. And now it's going to ask me where I want to save it. And I'm going to save it in my documents. And so I'm going to go there and I'm going to call this fall. 2022 class data demo homes and I'll hit enter and that way the next time I get into the application gateway all I got to do is open it up and it'll go to my document so I can go and open up the file it automatically takes me to the documents folder and I can go and grab it no, I don't have to do that because it's already here all right so let me cancel out of this and so now I have a data set and I want to generate some printouts. And the first printouts we need are the stem and leaf display and the histogram for, I believe it was the prices. Let me check that to make sure. Question. Yeah, here it is. Prices. Yes. Yeah, so I want a stem and leaf display and a histogram for the prices. So now I go to statistics. I'm going to go to summary statistics and I'll go to stem and leaf plot click on that and it's going to ask me what variable well we want the prices so you might have called it rent you might have called it asking whatever variable name you use for the price variable and I'll say okay and now I need you to get this into the word document so I'm going to just try actually I can come up here and I can hit uh, I can go edit and select all I believe that's an option and now I'm going to try control C and I'm going to go over to my word document and I'm going to bring it in here and I'm going to say control V and it worked. Look at that. And so I may need to come in here and clean it up a bit. But look at that. I have my stem and leaf display and you know, this one's off a little bit. There we go. And so that worked for me. Now you may need to use a snipping tool. You may need to take a picture with your camera. I don't care. Whatever you have to do, to get that stem and leaf plot into that box right there. So when I say, I believe the prices of my 75 automobiles are skewed to the right, we can look at your stem and leaf display and say, yeah, I agree with you. Now, the next printout that we want is, and I hit the wrong button there, is a histogram. So again, I'm going to go to statistics, except now I'm going to go to summary plots. Choose histogram and choose the prices. Put the prices in as the dependent variable and hit OK. And again, now your job is to, and I'm just going to try to see if I can copy this. See if I can just do a copy. All right, and let's go to the Word file and see if I can print. So again, come here. And now I'm going to control V. No, it just didn't, it didn't do it for me. So now I got to come up with another way of getting that. So let's get rid of that. So I'm now going to go and I'm going to use my snipping tool. And it's going to let me to go and grab it. So I'll just grab it like this. Notice the scientific notation down here, price times e to the fifth. And now I should be able to, uh, I'm going to hit control C here, bring the word file back up. Hit control V, see what happens. There we go. Look at that. And so that worked for me. Um, again, a picture with your camera phone and upload the picture. But I need both the stem and leaf display and the histogram presented here for me. Um, another good reason why you want to start working early uh, you can get these printouts as soon as you watch the video um, and then you can answer the questions later because if you're going to have problems with statistics I'd rather answer them closer to the 22nd of August than to the 4th of September when it's due. Alright so that's that printout. The next printout we need is a descriptive statistics for your sizes or mileages. Now of course because I'm working with homes I'm going to be working with um, sizes. So I'll come back over here to my data set and I'll hit statistics summary statistics, descriptive statistics. It's that simple. And then I'm going to come in here. 
I'm going to choose my size. You may do mileage if you're working with automobiles. And when you do this the first time, the end is going to be checked, the mean, the standard deviation, the min max. You need to check the median and the quartiles. And I could have swore I checked it there. There we go. You want to make sure six boxes are checked and then hit OK. And here we go again. And here are the numbers that I'm going to be using now to create my z-scores, to interpret a standard deviation, to interpret the mean. Um, but again, you're going to copy and paste them over into the Word document. And then the last one is the box plot. And again, let me make sure I think I was working with the box plot. I went to sizes and mileages for this printout, and then I went back to prices, didn't I? I did, the price variable. So let's come back over here. Statistics. Now I'm going to go back to plots, and I'm going to come down here to the box and whisker plot. This is one of the ways that we can identify outliers. So I'm going to put the prices in here. Now I'm going to do it incorrectly to begin because I do not want this plot. This is a plot where all of my locations are put in one plot. So I'm going to go this little icon here will take me back to whatever menu generated the plot that I'm looking at or the output that I'm looking at. And so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit horizontal because I like seeing it on a number line. Don't have to do this. But that turns it 90 degrees and puts the prices on the x-axis. And again, scientific notation, that's times 10 to the fifth power. It's completely fine if you get that in your data. But I don't want that plot either. I want it separated by location. So I'm going to use price as a dependent variable. I'm going to use location as a categorical variable. And now this is the box plot that I want. And the way that I would interpret this, for me, I'll say for my Brandon homes, there are no outliers and no suspect outliers. For my Valrico homes, which is location two in my case, I have one suspect, that's the symbol that I'm going to teach you about, that's a suspect outlier and no outliers. And for my Plant City homes, I have one suspect and no outliers. And that's all you have to do with the interpretations. So really, what, four printouts? Uh, when I have a stem and leaf display, a histogram, descriptive statistics, and a box and whisker plot. Um, let me show you one last thing. If you have trouble, if you don't have a snipping tool, here's another way to work with these uh, plots. So I can save this. I can save it, and it's going to save it in the documents. And you can see I've saved a bunch of other stuff. I'll say fall 2022 box plot. And now when I go to my uh, documents on the application gateway, I can actually insert that image into um, a Word document. So I can come back out to here and I can open up Word. Where's Word here? Here it is. I can open up Word and it's going to go through several same questions. So I went through a, a similar upload to what we did in statistics to upload the project here into uh, Word in the application gateway. And now let me slide down to where we need that image. So I put my cursor in where I want the box plot and now I'm going to go and insert and I'm going to call it a picture. And I'll say this device. And I'll go to the documents folder. And there it is, the box plot. And that's the one I want to insert. And so it'll take a second probably, but there it and actually that's not where I wanted to put it. I wanted to put it down in the the box plot should have been inserted down on the last page, uh, the last question. But that's the idea. You should be able to insert uh, pictures in the Word application on the application gateway. So hopefully that helps. It took a little longer than I wanted to, but I wanted to go through all the details. If you have questions, office hours are a great place to get these questions asked and answered. When we're on the office hours, we can open up a whiteboard or we can share our screen and take you through this process. So if you have questions, by all means, join us during the office hours and What's my motto? Work early. Get this, get started on this, and I'll talk to you later. So long.